often hear these testimonies about people who accept Jesus into their life and life is amazing, life is great, but then what after that? In the evolution of the Christian soul, there is two destinations that must take place in your walk with Christ. The first place is the place where you choose to have God in your life. You accept Jesus into your heart, you say, I choose to believe in Him, and you receive salvation. Now the second destination, there's lots of names for it, but I like to call it spiritual maturity. The place where your soul reaches the promised land, where you receive full baptism of the Holy Spirit, and you have victory over sin, and basically where you complete the process of sanctification. And I just want to say, if you haven't made it to the first destination, this video will be like in a different language. It will be really hard to understand. But this video is talking about the time in between these two destinations, which is called the time of sanctification. And don't think this time is a matter of like days or weeks, but no, it's a matter of years. I've heard it range from like three to 20 years. So it's a long time. Think of it as a stage of being a spiritual baby and then you grow up into an adult, basically. I like what Lecrae said about it is, no one comes out of the womb walking. Another way to like visually represent it is, this is one the Bible uses quite often, is you have um, a seed and then it grows into a flower or a plant. Once you reach this place of spiritual maturity, you are no longer a slave to sin. Have fellowship with the Spirit, there will be like spiritual fruit in your life and you will find contentment in Christ and you have fellowship with the Spirit, did I say that? Just a severely intimate relationship with God. Just basically a whole nother level of faith. Once you're at this place of spiritual maturity, this is when God can fully use you for the mission. After the destination of spiritual maturity, your faith no longer feels like up and down. Instead it's like, woo, right up there. I did not explain that well. You conform to the image of Christ and you start to love Him and others with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Spiritual maturity at its core is conforming to the image of Christ, which is the fulfillment of the new covenant. So in this video, I'm going to solely focus on the transformation it takes from to get from here to there. Between these two destinations, you will experience four things. Faith, surrender, discipline slash obedience, and endurance in the battle of spiritual warfare. The first one we're going to focus on is faith. During this time in your life, you will learn to believe in the full promise of the new covenant, that God will fulfill your faith, that He wants to do it, and that He will do it. Jesus Christ living in you, and you living like Jesus Christ. The secret of the new covenant is believing that God will do it all. We do not reach this place of spiritual maturity by our own strength like the old covenant. Apart from God, we are nothing. We do not have the ability to do this. Man is sinful only because we are unperfect, because we are not God. We are separate from God. So God's solution was to live in us and work through us. If we relied on our own strength, we'd be exhausted and never make it. Your job is just to abide in Christ and remain in a close relationship with Him through constant communication with prayer and daily reading the Bible. And yeah, dos. Number two, surrender. Surrendering the rights to have our needs met, which enables us to not be served, but to serve, like Jesus did. This is the part of your walk with Christ where you learn to surrender any desires of your flesh and anything holding you back from God in your life. And trust me, once God is all you have, you'll realize that He's all you could ever need or want. Show God you mean business. Get rid of anything holding you back in your faith or spiritual garbage. Um, for me, this was deleting a lot of songs off my phone because a lot of them were just like very inappropriate and I just remember going through and I'm like, okay, Holy Spirit, show me the ones that you want me to delete. And I would get this like spirit of unrest whenever I'd come upon a song that um, God wanted me to delete on my phone. I'm like, if, but it's catchy. It's not like that inappropriate. There's just a few verses in there and then and then I scroll to the rest one and then there's this overwhelming feeling of like uneasiness. I'm like, okay God, I know you're telling me to delete this. So, <clears throat> but it goes more than just external things. Like there's also an internal surrender that takes place. This is t um, what it means to take up your cross daily. Just Surrender the desires of the flesh. Like, for example, when um, when someone like says something mean to you or offends you in some way, your first gut reaction is just to say something back, get back at them. But um, but biblically, it says to turn the other cheek and show love to them. And so, surrendering the desire of your flesh would be to um, get rid of that desire to be angry at them and instead replacing that desire with love and showing love back to them. Okay, the third one is discipleship slash obedience. It's the part where you train yourself to be godly where the first stage of this is God 
exposing the filthiness in your heart and showing you areas you need to work on. Revealing whatever you're supposed to be doing that you are not or whatever you are doing that you're not supposed to be. You're just walking in Christ's footsteps and remember we have the ability to do this because of the power of grace. Okay, last one, which is spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is necessary for spiritual growth, and it is a very good thing unless you're not responding to it properly. Think about how many people you know that come to Christ through brokenness. The story of Job in the Bible is a prime example of spiritual warfare. The spiritual attack is not evidence you have bad fruit. The evidence of fruit is what the spiritual attack produces in your heart. Signs you are going through spiritual warfare include um, doubts about your salvation, thoughts that God is not good and He has rejected you, loss and pain in your life, being in a dark place in your mind and negative thoughts, temptation, and so much more. There are four reasons for spiritual warfare. The first one is testing. Until Christ is fully formed in you, Satan will try to do everything he can to make you act independent of God's will. To test your faith, God will give the devil access to your life and for very good reasons. The afflictions from the devil will make not only your faith stronger, but your character stronger. The second reason for spiritual warfare is character. Character is shown not when your life is great, but when your life is turned upside down. He does this for the strengthening and the consistency of our character. Because our main goal throughout all of this is to receive the character of Christ, which I'm gonna make a video on next week. Third reason is trust. It eventually brings about trust in God. Because you'll see all the ways he still remains faithful to you and still offers you grace. It will help you realize the love he has for you and it will strengthen your relationship with him. Fourth, <laughs> fourth reason is humility. It will make us realize how dependent we are on God and that we can really do nothing apart from Him. And we realize the blessing of weakness. If Jesus were to remove all our struggles of sin overnight and we become, oh sorry, my hair is crazy, and so we become Christ-like characters overnight and become from this destination to that destination overnight, well guess what? We'd be struggling with pride. We'd think it was, whoa, look at us being all Christ-like, you know? So we need to realize it's all in Him and not on us. It develops a dependence on God and shows us our need for a savior. It keeps us humble so we use his strength to persevere and to endure. Okay, that's really it for um, the things I wanna say for like the process of sanctification. But I also wanna say that yes, I've came up with this list, but it's really not a formula. Really, everybody's walk with Christ is different and we all get to this place different times and different ways and it happens differently for every person. Just keep chasing after Christ with all you have and eventually you will reach that spiritual promised land. And I almost feel like a bit of a hypocrite for making this video because I know I haven't reached full spiritual maturity yet and I'm closer than I ever was but I was actually inspired not only by God laying this video idea on my heart but um, I was listening to Michael Criswell which is my favorite Christian YouTuber. Um, he's reached full spiritual maturity. You can just tell by his messages. Like, it's not even him speaking, it's the Holy Spirit. And so, I have not reached that place yet, but I am definitely, I've, I've been a Christian for a little over two years, and I'm definitely at a place in my faith I've never been before. Like, like in my past, my faith has just felt like going up and down so now it feels like a steady up and like I'm feeling like contentment with Christ and like I'm fully beginning to understand like I could start crying I'm fully beginning to understand that like he truly wants the best for me and like even with trials to face like um, he truly intends good for people and he wants us to enjoy life and he wants the best for us he knows I just can't even explain it. I just have such this joy in Christ. Oh, I can't explain it. And the reason I make YouTube videos is not because I necessarily like making YouTube videos, but I want to get this message out there because I want everybody to experience the same joy I'm experiencing because I have not felt the same joy like this in anything else in my life. Definitely not. And so I want everybody to experience this. And right now I'm I'm trying to get that to that place of spiritual maturity that Michael Criswell talks about and so many people talk about and um, and so right now I'm praying for tests I'm like God send trials my way that's that's a scary prayer to make but never thought I'd get to this place I am right now in my faith and the reason I want to make these videos is because I want everybody to experience the same joy that I wake up to every day with God 
And so with that said, thank you for watching and bye!